Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printing here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to write group by queries in Flask SQL Alchemy. So group by queries are useful when you want to group some of the data in one or more of your tables. So a, an example would be, it's let's say you have a table with the names of people and names aren't unique. So a lot of people will have the same name. Well, a group by query can determine how many instances of a particular name that you have. So let's say Anthony was in the table and there were 15 people named Anthony. Then when you perform a group wide query, you can see that Anthony appears in the table 15 times instead of getting all the rows in the table and then counting the individual instances of Anthony, or instead of doing a query where you filter by Anthony directly and counting that you can group by to where all the names are going to be grouped by the number of times they appear in the table. So this will make more sense when I show you. So I have a test database set up and I'll open it up using SQL Alchemy or SQLite, I should say. And it has two columns. So customer and the other is purchase. So what I want to do is I want to figure out a couple of things. I can figure out how many purchases a particular user has, and I can figure out how many or how much money they have spent in all those purchases. So the first is I'll figure out how many they have. So just looking at it here, I can see that Anthony ID one has four or five purchases. And then Sarah has six, Carlos has four and Penny has none. So to write this query to get the number of purchases for each person, first select I'm going to select their name. So customer.name. And then what I want to do is I want to count the number of times that their ID appears in purchase. So purchase dot customer ID, because that represents the customer. And then I'm going to select from the customer table and I need to join the other table. So I'm using a left join because Penny has no orders. If I use a regular join, then Penny wouldn't appear at all, which may be something you want. And I'm going to join, let's see, purchase on customer ID is equal to purchase dot customer underscore ID. And then I'm going to group by the customer name. So I want to find out how many purchases each customer name has. So group by customer dot name. So now with the query done, I have Anthony at five, Carlos four, Penny zero, and Sarah at six. So you can see this query is a little more complicated than normal, but it's still fairly straightforward. But this gives me the information I want. I can see how many orders that everyone has at the same time. And if I want to see how much they've paid in total, I can change this count here to be a sum. And I need to sum the price, not the customer ID. So sum purchase dot price. And now it tells me that Anthony has spent $88, Carlos 73, Penny none, so it's null, and then Sarah $175. So now let me translate this to Flask SQL Alchemy. First thing I need to do is set up my models. So I'll do that quickly. Import SQL Alchemy, and then instantiate Flask, and then specify where the database is located. Let's see, test.db, and then instantiate the database, or SQL Alchemy, I should say. And then I'll create the two classes. So the first is customer and customer has two columns, an ID column, which is an integer and the primary key. And it has a name column. And then the purchase table has an ID. which is the primary key. It has 
a customer ID, which is going to be a foreign key back to the customer table. So customer.id, and then it has a price column, which represents how much they paid. So db.integer, let's just leave it as an integer. And then there's a relationship between the two. I won't be using this relationship, but normally in Flash SQL Alchemy, you would do this. So I can call this uh, purchases or orders, whatever I want to call it. And let's see, db column, or I should say db relationship to the purchase table. And the back reference is going to be called customer. Okay, so that should be enough. So now I'll start up a Python REPL. And from app import db customer and purchase. So to make sure that the connection is okay, I get an error, no such table. So let's see. The database URI is misspelled. So move the extra L and then uh, from app import db again, customer customer query all and I think I need to restart it so from app import DB customer and purchase customer dot query dot all and it's telling me that it just can't connect so let's see uh, still misspelled. So SQL Alchemy is misspelled. So from app import db customer and purchase and then customer dot query all. Okay. So now it's connecting to the database. Okay. So now I want to write that same group by query that I wrote first. So counting everything. So to do that, I'm going to use the DB object directly instead of using customer because I need more flexibility. So I'm going to write db.session.query. And then the main table that I want to query is going to be customer in this case. Then I'll come back to this. And then I need to join the order table. So outer join. And this can be a regular join as well, but if I do a regular join, it's going to leave out Penny because she doesn't have any purchases. So outer join, let's see, purchase. And the join is going to be on customer.id is equal to purchase.customer underscore ID. So the double equals is needed because this is Python, but this is just the syntax in Flask SQL Alchemy for joining a table. So the first table and then the first table is what I have here in the query. The second table, the right side table is purchase here. And the condition that they're both joined on is here. And then I'll add a group by. So group by customer.name and then all results. So let's see, it says customer is not defined. These should be uppercase, not lowercase. So let me just put uppercase there, uppercase there. They refer to the class. And now what I want to do is I want to actually see the same data that I saw before. So I want to see the customer name and I want to see the number of purchases they have. So to do that, I need to count the number of times their ID appears in the purchase table. And to do that, I'm going to use db.func, so F-U-N-C dot count. And then I'll pass in the column that I want to count. So purchase dot customer underscore ID, just like that. So now when I run the query, I see that Anthony has five purchases, Carlos has four purchases, Penny has no purchases, and Sarah has six purchases. So if I want to do the second example that I had, the sum, it's pretty similar. Instead of counts, I'll use the sum. So func allows me to use the standard database function. So count is a function, sum is a function. If you have other functions in mind that the database has, you would use db.func. So sum, and instead of summing the customer ID, I want to sum the price to get how much they paid for all their purchases in total. So now when I run that, I see that Anthony has paid 88, Carlos 73, Penny 
nothing, so none, and then Sarah, 175. And remember, these are tuples, so when you loop through and you get the data, you're working with a tuple. So in this case, the zero element of the tuple is Anthony, and the first element is 88. So the zeroth element represents the name, and the first element represents the price that they paid for all of their purchases. So even though this is a simple example, you should be able to take this and apply it to whatever case you're using because group buys are going to kind of follow this form. So as long as you know the general syntax, you should be able to add this into your project if you need to write some group buy queries. So that's all I want to cover in this video. If you haven't checked out my free Flash SQL Alchemy Basics course on my website, you should. It's a more progressive way to learn Flash SQL Alchemy, and I'll be adding this video and others to it when I update it, but perhaps by the time you're watching this video, the course is updated. So I'll have a link to this course in the description below. Like I said, it's free on my website. You can check it out. And that's about it. So if you have any questions about using group by and flask, uh, let me know. Just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.